What's going on guys? I know composers often struggle to get started with pieces, and this week I wrote a piece where I didn't actually write any new notes. And I'm going to tell you how I did it in this video, so stay tuned. So the beautiful summer weather that we had last week has now sadly gone, but it doesn't matter because I've got plenty to be getting on with indoors. I am working flat out at the moment on my music theatre piece for the German School London. If you haven't seen the video about that, then I'll pop up a link. It's a modern updating of The Beggar's Opera by John Gay, and it's been great fun. I'm writing the script as well as the music again, and I'm having so much fun with that. It'll be done by the end of May, so that's very near its end. And there are also projects that are at their early stages. So the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra project you've seen in some of the last couple of vlogs. I had a call about that this week, about about doing social media together because obviously I do video and it's really interesting to think about how we might kind of be doing the social media side of things together. And also had a call with the Bromley Youth Music Trust because you might remember I'm going to be doing a project with them and that's still very early stages but we had a great chat about how we're going to raise funds for it and what the concept of the project is. But today I wanted to talk to you about my Worthing project, and particularly about one piece that I wrote this week which is one of a series of little pieces, kind of sketch pieces if you like, for that project. Now as you may know, Worthing is on the south coast of England by the seaside, and because of that a lot of the material that I've written for this piece so far has been based on that classic song, Oh I Do Like To Be Beside The Seaside. It was written in 1907 and it's an old British musical song. Now if you don't know it, then I've done a 30 second little video I'm going to show you now, which will remind you of a tune and also give you a sense of what Worthing and this project is like. So the piece is a kind of a six chord summary of Oh I Do Like To Be Beside The Seaside. And I like the idea of writing something with lots of emptiness and space and silence. And a bit like you see in the video that I've put the music to, it's that very narrow shot of a bird with lots of sky around it. And you can see that occasionally birds just fly through the frame of the camera. And the video strikes me as being like a kind of a microcosm of this huge theatre that I have in the back of my garden. And it's just a tiny segment of that theatre. Occasionally little bits of action pass through that segment, but you don't see the full picture. And in the same way I suppose I wanted this piece to be like a kind of a zoomed in on a little bit of the song, Oh I Do Like To Be Beside The Seaside, and just occasional chords appear in the frame of my piece as it were. So the six chords pushed together are as follows. So how did I get to there? Well, first of all, I picked six syllables in the song, which I decided to zero in on. So first of all, oh, I do at the beginning. It starts with that, oh, I do. And I took the first and third notes. And then later on, it comes back, I do. That time it doesn't have the note in the middle. So I just took those two notes again. So twice I've got, and then for the fifth and sixth notes, I took lots and like. So I'll play my film again now, edited just to show the six notes that I took and with blank space in between. So I'll show you now the harmony that goes with those chords in the original song. It starts off so quite a straightforward, if you know anything about music theory, it's a dominant seventh chord to a tonic chord with an added six. That's a distinctive sound of this song. It's a sound you associate with Messiaen, for example, a lot of his pieces, you know, kind of end with big, big added six chords. I hope none of this is too technical for you. I'll try and keep it fairly simple. And then the third and fourth chords, again, very similar. Dominant seventh going to an added six tonic chord. And then the fifth and sixth chords, slightly different, so the fifth chord, that's, so an E major seventh chord you'll see, that is the dominant seventh of A minor, which is chord three, if you're into music theory, and that's the sixth chord, then it progresses to chord three. So five seven of three, dominant seventh of A minor, going to A minor, which is chord three. 
Now I wanted to find a way to use those chords in a slightly distinctive way. So instead of having for my second chord the root position, I just had it spaced like this. And that has a nice open sound. For my first chord then, I went and transposed the second chord down a tone. So for the third and fourth chords, because they've got the same note at the top, I decided to do something slightly different. For the third chord, I used the dominant seventh chord that was in the original. So slightly different from my first chord. See, it's got a, an E natural the second time rather than E flat the first time. So dominant seventh chord. I then decided to transpose that upper tone for my fourth chord. So that has now a different harmonic meaning in tonal terms, if you're into this sort of thing. It's, it's a bit like the... It's the dominant seventh of chord two, which is G minor, right? So first chord, second chord, third chord, fourth chord, my fifth chord then is using the chord in the original, but this is also a transposition up of the fourth chord by a tone, I suppose. So we've got... And then the sixth chord, using a chord from the original, but spaced again like the spacing in my previous chords. So... The final process of the piece was taking each one of those six chords and triggering it only when something in my video happens, i.e. when a bird or something else flies across the screen. And you'll see therefore that the chords get very spaced out and they don't get grouped into three pairs. And I've done a little bit of post-production so that some of the chords you don't hear the attack of the piano, but it's all done with the piano. Very, very simple. And as I say, it doesn't sound anything like, oh, I do like to be beside the seaside, but it just goes to show how if you're struggling with composing, if you're struggling with starting a piece, then take some existing material, take something that's been written by someone else, take something that you've written, and start playing around with it. Why not just try deleting notes? I think the idea of creating a musical summary is a really fun one, and I might talk about that again in a bit more detail sometime if you're interested. So if you haven't heard it already, then this is how the piece starts, and I'll put the link up top as well so you can go and click on it if you want. Oh, and I forgot to say, by the way, my whole thing is transposed up a fifth as well, so the original that I've been playing just now is in F major, my version is in C major, if you care about these things. If you've enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to the channel because I do one of these videos every Sunday night. And also say what you thought in the comments because it's always interesting to hear what you guys thought. And I will see you next Sunday.